It's a foamy mousse dispenser, but sadly it is not dispensing foamy mousse anymore. The reason for the glove, by the way, I got a tiny little burn, very tiny little burn, and then all the skin flared up around it. This is just to protect you, the innocent, from uh, horrible looking hands. But it will heal up in time. It always does. Anyway, this is one of several units I got round about the same time to compare. And one of the things I was suspicious about is that uh, the motor in here, the pump motor, is presumably down in this void here. And there's no drainage hole, so there is a risk that uh, liquid has got into it, which is most likely for these. So this one is USB rechargeable. It has a button on top, and when you press the button for a good enough length of time, it lights up red, and it lights up red for ages. But even at that point, while it's still lighting up red, if you put your hand underneath, normally it would trigger, but it's not triggering. So I shall turn it back off, even though it doesn't really matter. Now, how does this come off? Is it going to be clipped? That, that'll do. Thank you very much. Let's uh, find what's in here. So it turns out it unclips with uh, surprising violence, yes. Here is the motor. There's the lithium cell, which is kind of stuck in. Am I seeing liquid down at the bottom of this? Let's press the right button to turn it. It's dry. Why is that not working then? Okay, tell you what, tell you what. Oh, it all unplugs. There's liquid dribbling out everywhere now, right enough. Um, This is the uh, intake port, I'm guessing, that goes on to... That spigot in there. Right, tell you what, let's unplug the pump and just basically connect it to the bench power supply. So there is a little connector down here. Everything's into connectors. This is good. Connectors not coming out. That's not so good. Where is a pair of side cutters? It's also good to know that the lithium cell can be upgraded if needs be. This is not coming out. Is there some catch system I don't know about? Or has it been glued in? Most likely glued in. Bench power supply is set to... Uh, this is going to be... I'll set it to about 3 volts. And I shall put the black connection on here, since black is on there. And this connection here. And it's just smooth all over my bench. What's the bed? What's the bet it works now and it had just gunked up? One more, I'm just going to get some, some to clean that mess up. The schmoo has been cleaned up. Now, what's the bet? If I plug this back on here, what's the bet it would just work again? That's what happens sometimes. Sometimes the motor, it just basically gets stiffened. If you can free the motor either by giving it a, a little jolt of a higher voltage, not usually totally recommended, or higher current, then it will clear the problem. So I'm now going to press and hold this button in the back until it goes. It's lighting up red. There is the infrared sensor there. It is working now. Well, that's kind of uh, made that video a lot shorter than I was expecting. Lovely. Well, tell you what then. Let's reverse engineer the circuit board. One moment, please. Okay, reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. Something caught me out initially. The circuit board seemed to be missing a couple of components which turned out to be on this little satellite circuit board with the infrared emitter and uh, receiver. And it's got a couple of resistors on board there. They were covered with hot melt glue. I have re-glued this in, having unglued that with the glue in different positions. But let's take a look down on the circuit board itself and see what's interesting. So we have the USB charge port and a classic 4056 charge control chip charging lithium cell. It has a 152, 15 and 2 zeros, 1500 ohm resistor setting the charge current, which is probably going to be round about 700 milliamps, I'd guess. There is a decoupling capacitor across the input uh, from the USB supply and there's uh, two uh, decoupling capacitors for stability across the cell plus also one over here across the microcontroller for extra stability. The circuit board has a button on the back. There's very little in the back. A button and two LEDs. The button is behind here, the two LEDs are behind here, and there are their 100 ohm resistors. 101, 10, one and a single zero, 100 ohms. Um, 
The motor is driven by this dinky little MOSFET down here, an AO9T. Uh, it has a couple of resistors associated with it, and then it's got a snubber diode across it, the M7F. I'm guessing, I've normally just seen M7, but the F, I presume, means fast recovery for dealing with transients better. Plus, it's also got a little photocapacitor. They've gone to town in this. Overall, this is the one that seems to have the best software and the best design, this unit, so it's pretty good. Uh, anyway... Let's take a look at, the, I think that's everything covered. Let's take a look at the circuit board schematic. So I shall bring that in. And zoom down just a little tiny bit more to fill the frame with schematic. Oh, way too much, but not to worry. It's good enough. There's a USB incoming supply. There's its little decoupling capacitor. There is a 4056 chip. There is its current setting resistor there. Uh, it has direct control over the green LED to show that it has that charge is complete and it's got its own 100 ohm resistor. But the charging status, which pulls a low um, when it's uh, in a charging condition, uh, is using this pull-up resistor on this side, and it pulls it low and monitors it in the microcontroller. So the microcontroller will flash the red LED until the charging is completed, and it changes over here. The green LED will light. It will remove the signal from the processor, and then just the green LED will be lit to show it's charged. When you push this button here, there is actually a pull-up resistor, which is quite unusual. Uh, where is that pull-up resistor? That pull-up resistor is um, this one. And uh, what's the other one? The other pull-up, uh, the other resistor was for the, that set, that resistor there for the charge status. Um, so, when it charges, there's the lithium cell and its two decoupling capacitors across it. Uh, and there are two potential dividers. The button, which pulling that 10k resistor down to the zero volt rail to signal that button's been pressed and also this 10k resistor now the two resistors that are in yellow are on that satellite circuit board that little infrared uh, hand sensor one of them forms a potential divider with a photodiode and I've coloured the ultra the ultraviolet, the infrared ones pink because that's the sort of colour well that's what the colour looked on the camera when I was doing the testing when the microcontroller wants to see if there's a hand there, I would guess it probably looks at that initially without any uh, infrared on. Then it pulses this infrared LED briefly and then looks at it again to see how much of a signal difference there was. And it should be able to average out and null out. I don't know if it's working a fixed threshold or it's nulling out ambient levels. Certainly at night time I noticed this unit, it was actually less sensitive. So I'm guessing that the daylight adds enough infrared that it does heighten its sensitivity a bit. There's a 100 ohm resistor and a red LED that indicates the, when you push the button, it indicates that it's turning on. And I also I think it lights when it's pumping foam. Can't remember. Never really looked at that. The MOSFET has a 10k pull-down resistor and it's got a 1k uh, gate resistor and it switches the motor on which has the re reverse uh, spike diode to clamp the collapsing field off the motor and also it's got this capacitor across it to filter out noise. Uh, it's all well designed. Oh, and the little local decoupling capacitor. Um, anything else worth saying about it? Not really. So tell you what, let's show you a rough sketch of the infrared unit, how it's working. So there is a circuit board. And on that are mounted two chips. One is the infrared emitter and it's made of clear plastic. And the other is the infrared receiver and it's made of black plastic. Well, it's blocks visible light, but passes infrared. Now, if you simply had these behind the clear cover, Let's draw this as a sort of clear cover. You'd get a reflection and it would cause false triggering. So what they do is they put in a foam uh, surround and that has actually got adhesive on it, physically sticks to the front. And this is a little foam pad that just stops light spreading over. And there's another one over here as well. And they physically stick onto the front of that so that it is completely preventing light spillage between the two of them. Normally that infrared LED would be pulsed and it would send out a, a fairly wideish beam. And when your hand is in the vicinity, that would be, then get reflected back and it would be picked up by the infrared receiver, which is, forms part of a potential divider. The foam generator, this 
thing here. It's a very clever design. It's got a motor that basically wobbles a plate and there are three diaphragms. See these black lines here? They pretty much represent the diaphragms that are inside. And as it rotates, it pushes those little diaphragms backwards and forwards. Two of them are pumping air and one of them is pumping liquid. It's sucking the liquid up, the bubbly liquid, and uh, putting it into the air, the flow. Now you can see a spring inside here. That is purely to stop it kinking because it is silicon. It means you can bend it quite tightly and it won't kink. The liquid will still be able to travel through that. So when it's actually pumping it up through that pipe, what you get is that mixture of air and uh, the bubbly liquid. So you'll by default have some bubbles, but then it goes through this thing here and that has a fine mesh screen or two in it and when those big bubbles hit it they can't get through so it pushes them through and they form lots and lots of tiny bubbles and then even tinier bubbles and what you end up uh, coming out the end is a thick mousse out the end of that it's very good it's a very simple design but a very refined design i particularly like the fact it's got those three diaphragms but two are doing air and one is doing liquid it's very balanced uh, but that is it is also worth mentioning that the infrared beams point down the way the foam ejection spout points were that way i'm guessing that's partly because i have had problems with other ones where the foam dripping down actually caused it false trigger and one unit just kept it would just get into a loop it would see its own foam as the foam sort of curled round and it would just start sort of spraying foam out all the time the lithium cell isn't super generous but i'd say that that it's not super generous this thing lasts about a month between charges uh, I'm not sure how often I refill the container, but I have been away from home for long periods of time, like two months, and come back and it's still got a charge in it. And that's despite the fact that it is just pulsing the infrared. I would guess that it goes into a sleep mode, though, that if you're using it fairly regularly, it pulses fairly regularly to actually detect when your hands are there. But if you're away from it for a long time, like overnight, it will then go into a sort of sleep mode that will just pulse every so often and you have to hold your hand under it for a second or so before it actually triggers, but then it'll go into the sort of waken mode and uh, run faster. But that's it. It's good. It's working again. Now that thing about me giving it a bump with a power supply, that is a common thing with motors. Sometimes uh, they just jam up and this one does have a suspicious stain on here that suggests that maybe liquid has been down here. Not sure. That would be annoying. It's not been much. The temptation is to get some oil in here and just basically give it an oily coating inside for protection. Um, but that thing, it even works with industrial motors. Sometimes you'll find an industrial, say for instance, a lathe with a coolant fluid pump that is seized sometimes you just turn the power off and you get some grips and just turn the pump and you, you feel it just it's stuck in its seal and it just suddenly turns and then you turn the power on and it's working again but it is worth if you get pumps like that motors like that just making sure everything is lubricated and free to move and that bearings are are good but that's it i'm glad this one's running again because it is by far of all the ones i've tested so far it was one of the better ones and uh, it was an easy fix and nothing like I was expecting. I was expected to be flooded with liquid. It was dry inside. Um, and uh, it was just that thing that, you know, things just stick up and sometimes you need a bump to get them going again.